God is good. God is kind. God is wonderful. God is dependable. My message says, my conclusion. My conclusion. I read about a man in the scripture, Job by name. He was a man who suffered untold hardship in his life. He lost virtually all he ever labored for in a single day. His wife even concluded by saying, Cause God and die, it will be better for you to do so than going through what you are going through. Because the wife couldn't just imagine my what my husband, you know, is faithful, my husband is spiritual, my husband is innocent. How come that all these things are happening to my husband? And Mrs. Job's confession and request or admonition to her husband taught me a lesson that sometimes bad things do happen to good people. But Job said, can we receive something good from God and not receive evil occasionally? He said, God has given, God has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Scripture recalls that with all that Job ever went through, he did not sin, neither did he charge God foolishly. Job, you bought my heart freely. You did what is uncommon in a dispensation. My conclusion, listen to me. I have traveled far and wide looking for help as a human being, looking for support, assistance, and relief materials as a human being, but all to no avail. Sincerely speaking, human beings are generally deceptive, hypocritical, difficult to understand, complex in mind, shrewd in dealings, and hard to decode. Quite often than not, they promise the unavailable, which they have zeroed their mind, never to fulfill. They promise the unavailable, which they have no intention to fulfill. Before I gave my life to Christ, let me just go down a little bit into the memory lane. Before I gave my life to Christ, I was such a person who trusted people to a fault because I simply thought that everybody else was just like me. Each time people disappointed me back then, I usually felt the stink and its venom beyond description. This horrible trend continued in me until my elder brother waded into the situation. He schooled me via his personal nasty experiences people had taught him over time. Then he concluded that nobody anywhere, anytime in the world is exactly your type and that I am making a grave mistake by reposing ultimate confidence in man. At first, I didn't understand. Did you hear what I've just said now? When my brother waded into it and trying to school me, you know, on a more better note, at first I didn't understand the angle from which he was talking. Not until my surreal ordeals began to take tolls on me. Thereafter, I decided to be looking before leaping. I decided to be looking before jumping or concluding any matter i became better became stronger and wiser with regard to relationships and associations unfortunately after my conversion i started returning to my vomit gradually until my pains and fears deepened through the people i trust well for over three decades now that i have been born again and I've been consistently relating with people, both ministers and brethren alike, as uh, you know, a child of God. The only thing I can tell you now is that I am concluding again that men will always be men. Only a few people are genuinely saved and seriously committed with their Christian life, but majority of the people who troop to their various churches, assemblies, and denominations presently. They are nothing but can be beautifully described as mere mixed multitude. As you listen to this short exhortation, I'd like you to draw conclusions on certain issues, certain practices, and norms in our society 
today. It will help you if you don't want to lose your spine. My conclusion as a preacher, my conclusion as a father, my conclusion as a husband, my conclusion as a Christian, my conclusion as a leader in the house of God is that God is still good. God is so good and none can be compared with him. Regardless of my position, regardless of my situation, regardless of my condition in life, God is so good. My conclusion is that God is always dependable and always available to help. My conclusion is that only God cannot fail. Anybody can fail. Your spouse can fail you, God forbid, but it's a possibility. Your children or any of your children can fail you. A brother, a sister, a pillar in the house of God can fail you. Even your pastor can fail you, but God does not fail. I am the Lord, I change it not, is what the scripture says, and God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he has spoken, definitely, most assuredly, is going to bring it to fusion. My conclusion is that it's only God who will not abandon you to your faith. God will not abandon me to my faith. And that has given me consolation in my conclusion. My conclusion is that without God, I am a capital nobody. My conclusion is that God is kind-hearted and compassionate any day. My conclusion is that if God is unwilling to help me, nobody can help me. I will lift up my eyes unto the hill. So said David, from where comes my help? My conclusion is that only God is able to help me, to keep me, to lift me, to uphold me, to bless me, to stabilize me the more. Yes, my conclusion is that there is nothing that is beyond God in life. My conclusion is that God is unchanging changer and the uncreated creator. My conclusion is that God is all-knowing. God is everywhere. Jehovah, Shammah, the omnipresent God who is present to present present to those who are present in his presence presently. My God, this is the God that I serve. My conclusion is that nothing can be, can be, can be great in life without grace. And that's why I have zeroed my mind that it is only God that I need most in my life. Man will be man. Man will be man. Man will be man. And God will also be God. When every else fails, God does not fail. Is dependable, is reliable, is ever ready to help, to help, to lift, to stabilize, and to bless, and to uphold. He is the lifter up of my head. My conclusion is that God can be fully depended upon circumstances notwithstanding. I concluded recently that God cannot be fully committed to your matter unless you are truly and properly redeemed. If you are not properly redeemed, you are still in your sin. You are serving the devil and serving sin, and you go wherever your lust has led you. You go wherever your sinful lifestyle has led you. God cannot be totally and comprehensively committed into your redemption because you do not have the mark in your life. I have concluded, and I'm still concluding, and I will never stop concluding that way that God is the only indispensable personality in my life. When all else leaves and they want you to rot in life, you just turn to God. He has never disappointed anyone in life and yours will not be an exception. It won't be that your case will make God change. No, it does not change. My conclusion is that if God is for me, if God be for me, if God is with me, no qualms, no fears, no sorrow, no pain, no uncertainty in my life. And there will be no frustration. There will be, no, there will be nothing stampeding me, nothing to stampede me. If God is with me, my conclusion is that many people are not dependable. You that wants to put your trust in men, you have never been disappointed. You just wrote a letter to one classical disappointment now and it's coming 
any moment from now. My conclusion is that many people are not dependable. Forget about their tongue talking. Forget about their packaging and rebranding. Forget about the promises they are given. Forget about yes, Lord, that they say when they pray and when they greet you, God is good. You are lifted. You will make it. Forget about all that. Many people are actually not dependable. My conclusion is that many people in the house of God today, they are nothing but distinguished cheats and celebrated rogues. That's who they are in the house of God. I have concluded that in various churches and assemblies and Pentecostal circles today, only a few people are genuinely saved. Majority of them, they are not saved. Only a few people are saved, though they claim to belong to Pentecostal circles. They are not saved. When you look at their language, when you look at their disposition and their dressing, they are not saved. They are nothing but children of the devil. My conclusion, is that uh, nothing is beyond God, and that with God, nothing shall be impossible. I've concluded that very many people in their various churches today are nothing but fantastic satanic agents, and they are causing problems in such churches. Therefore, I want to, to, to challenge you now. Rely on God. Depend on God. And trust your life into his hand. He will never disappoint you because God is never too late and God is never too much in a hurry. God is not too fast and God is not too slow. He arrives at the nip of time. When he is needed most, that's when you are going to see him. And you will be glad when he finally shows up in your situation, your circumstance, in your condition. You will be laughing, you will be jumping, you will be leaping for joy. And people will ask you, for how long have you been planning this one secretly? And you are glad to tell them, I suppose, I am as surprised as you ah i have traveled far and wide looking for help and support and assistance and relief materials as a human being but what do i get in return nothing excellent zero was what i got because sincerely speaking human beings are generally deceptive they are hypocritical they are difficult to understand and they are complex in their mind they are shrewd in their dealings and hard to decode you've got to learn to trust god to meet your need to settle your case and to give you testimonies right in the presence of your mockers. God bless you as you be. You remember Job, as I've said at the, at the introduction of this message, in Job chapter 19 verse 25, for I know that my Redeemer liveth. Will this be your consolation? Will this be your conclusion? And will this be your meditation? Please let them be and you will be glad you did. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>